Hello, my beautiful and wonderful Ravenettes. It's Night Raven here, and today we are going back to r slash Tales from the Front Desk because we have not visited that subreddit in so long, and we have more stories that are simply cringeworthy and also just, ah, let's just dive right into it because I cannot hold back my excitement right now. Let's start with the, the media will hear about this by Armo511. So, we had a family staying with us while they were in town for a funeral. That sucks. They had a block of rooms and a pawn check, and they told us that privacy was important to them. Hmm, suspicious. They didn't want any info given out or any calls transferred to them, which, of course, we agreed to. Usually when guests ask this of us, nothing comes of it. This time, though, someone actually called. Both my coworker and I told him that we could not give out any information, Heard the guest's request, nor could he transfer him to the room. When I spoke to him, he immediately blew up, claiming that he's the one who set up the block. He's given us hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars, and I will and I will transfer him to the rooms. I have to know the whole family was down in one of our banquet rooms, and so without saying the room number, I transferred him to one of their rooms. Nobody answered, obviously. And it transferred back to me at the desk. We did this two or three times. Each time it transferred back, he accused me of lying to protect them and demanded that I actually transfer him. He was just yelling and yelling and bullying me, and I was 100% done with his shit. He repeated once more that he had given us thousands of dollars. The last thing I said was, you know what, sir, I understand that, but there is nothing else I can do for you. If you were someone who really needed to contact them, you'd be able to do so personally. His response was, you will not talk to me like that. The media will hear about this. You'll be on the news for the way you spoke to me. And he hung up. And this person not left any follow through. So, yeah, nothing happened. I do not feel sorry for this guy whatsoever, although it kind of seems like the family took advantage of him. But at the same time, he could just be some, you know, asshole who's just like, ooh, you know, I can claim this shit. This next one's titled, A Very Strange Night, by Varric Crows. So, I work at a 3.5 star hotel in the middle of the U.S. Typically, not much happens, but every now and then, the night goes crazy. This night in particular, my security guard was trying to deal with a guest who we were trying to kick out because people in his room were not only smoking the hotel, but they ripped two smoke detectors out of the ceiling and wall. Then, he tried bribing both of us to keep room, but the bribe was less than the smoking fine. <laughs> you know, that's when you pull out some weeds, like, hey man, I got some good weed here. <laughs> so while security was on the third floor, a lady walks up to my desk and say, you need to deal with these people out to my window because they're having sex. So I got outside in the parking lot and tell these people to stop having sex in the middle of the parking lot. And they were so drunk, the lady kept bouncing up and down a couple times, which let me see way more than I needed to. Then I head inside, security is has got the people down. The lady told me about the people outside having sex, comes around the corner yelling at me because I'm kicking her brother out, and then I called the police on them, saying I was being racist because I didn't call police on people having sex. What? To which I told the fire department was alerted because the alarm signaling they were taken down would shut her up. Police came and kicked people out, and the sex people disappeared into the night. I saw the picture of the people's junk slapping together burn into my head about eight months later. <laughs> free porn, man. Free porn. I mean, if the chick was, like, uh, really old, then I could see I'd be traumatizing, but I think I would just blink a couple times turn my ass back around and be like, I'm not being paid enough for this shit. I am not being paid enough for this shit. Susan, you can take care of it. Hmm. You don't believe me? Come have a look for yourself, by Chazar Cole. Sorry, just a quick rant. I hate when a guest asks me for something that we don't have, yet they still want to look for themselves. I work in a four-star spa and hotel, and for functions general overnight, some guests will ask us for cello tape. What the fuck is that? Or a phone charger, for instance. You get it. Something small that isn't going to hurt to ask if we have it. If I have it behind reception, I'll say yes and you can borrow it. If I say no, that doesn't mean you can peer over the desk to have a look for yourself. What's even worse is some guests peer over and try to move my stuff or paperwork to try and find it. Sorry, I can't use I can't supply you the extension lead, but yes, I've hidden it underneath our phones if you want to have a look. 
Keep your arms behind the desk at all times, otherwise you'll get a mad stare from a very annoyed receptionist. Any other receptionists get annoyed at this, or is it just me? This person keeps saying pear instead of uh, peer, which is P-E-P-E-E-R, and this person's spelling it pear, P-E-A-R. <laughs> if a person doesn't know English, looks at them like, what? Just confirming your name by Elaborate Eccentric. I like that name. I like the zing that it has with it. This is a short one, but it kills me every time. I work in a small downtown hotel for reference. I had two ladies walk in about 10 p.m. last night. They asked me about what rooms I had available. I explained rooms and rates. They then asked if I could show them the room before they book it. I politely told them that as it was 10 p.m. and I was the only one there, I could not because company policy. Then asked. They then asked the valet could do it. Again, no, he's not paid enough for it. They then brought the hotel up on their phones and asked me some questions about having a room with a view. Now, all this is weird to me as it was currently dark out and they had requested the room for only one night and checkout is at 11 a.m. Next, everyone's favorite third-party booking system, Expedia or Travelocity. Well, I found it cheap online. This is expensive here. I explain, and they go to the lobby to make the reservations on the phone. Ten minutes later, they show up and say, Thank you, we are staying elsewhere. Oh, and what is your name again? Elaborate Eccentric, ma'am. Okay, Elaborate Eccentric, I just want to make sure I get that right. And they walked out. Why? It's always so threatening. I know I did nothing wrong, but like, why do you need it? Are you trying to put a curse on me or leave a bad review citing me specifically for not showing you your room at 10 p.m. when there are two of you and one tiny me? At least when I worked in Ch Chimsney, I knew the worst they could do is to guest services and say that bad, bad cast members made me sad. Thank you so kindly for listening. Please feel free to call me, tell me I'm crazy or maybe just feel as anxious or maybe you do this to people and can explain the fear mongering. <laughs> they were old women. They could curse you. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, this is a short one. Yes, close this door in my face. Rude by Aeroshoot. I've worked in hotels for years now. I'd like to say I can handle a lot of what yes throw my way. However, this morning I was pushed to my limit in just a few seconds. Woo boy, this is gonna be good. You better buck your says down, people. The guest is walking towards the back room as I am from opposite direction on the sidewalk. We both clearly see each other and there is no other place you could be walking to other than the back door. I may be three seconds behind her. She, while she gets out her key and goes inside, just before I can grab the door handle, she quickly co closes it and walks away. While I'm getting my key out of the pocket to unlock the door, I know she takes a quick look back at me. I instantly knew she did it on purpose. I never went to 0-100 real quick as I did then. I took it all... All this work training self control me not to say something to this guest. This has happened other times before with other guests, and I could brush it off as an accident or something, or someone just being an asshole. But once you look back and made it clear she did it on purpose, I really want to say something so bad. But I've done this song and dance before. It's usually bait to get me the employee to react. They complain, and I don't g want to give her what she wanted, or maybe she's just an overall bitch. I just wanted to vent a little. I'm happy that I don't, didn't react, but it's been a long time since a guest set me off like that. And here's the last five minutes of my shift, too. Ooh. That's the worst. But, bitch, why you gotta be so mean? Like, come on, why do people do that? It, you know, it, it doesn't kill you to turn behind you and make sure, you know, that somebody's coming, that you don't shut the door in front of them. And most of the time what's happened to me, it's been out of, you know, ignorance or just people not looking behind them, which, you know, perfectly understandable. You, you got a place you need to go. But, yeah, it's, it's a pet peeve, I guess. Not really. It's just more like, uh, this shit again. This story is titled, No, You Can't Check In Seven Hours Early by Musty Day. What is it with guests trying to check in hours before the designated check-in time and getting genuinely mad at us when we decline due to room unavailability? I've had about five or six guests try to check in at 8 a.m. when our check-in time is 3 p.m. I understand a couple hours early. I'll even try to get you a room if they're ready to go, but seven hours? Really? Does no one read anything on their booking confirmation? 
more of this happening throughout the day, but we were at minus 15 rooms last night, so we just did not have anything. Most people were fine and just asked to store their luggage. Fine, perfect, happy to do that. But some people get genuinely angry, screaming my face angry. I just don't understand it. I don't understand it either. I mean, all the times I've been to hotels has been great. I don't think I've ever had a single hotel experience that was shit, like complete shit. Um, I always feel bad for the, uh, you know, ma you know, housekeepers and that kind of thing because they have to go through all the shit. Because I've read so many stories on here, it's just like, okay, I want to be nice. I do not want to be the guest they write about, but they do write about it. I want to be the, you know, the nice person that made their day. This next one is titled, The Guest is Always Right by Someone Has My Name. Let me start this tale by explaining something a little bit odd about my hotel. That is, next door to us, we have a second hotel. Same company, a very similar name. Originally, they were two separate hotels owned by two separate companies. The companies combined, and we just kept the two hotels. Between us is a small piece of land that prevents us from joining the two hotels together. It's safe to say it's a daily occurrence where guests arrive at the wrong hotel. And while it's a tad annoying once you've up unloaded to be told no, you're not staying here, most guests do understand. Then you had this guy. He phoned up, stating that he had left some items behind at the hotel, so I checked lost property. No dice. Grab a few details off him, room number, dates of stay, etc. No dice. Grab his booking number, gives me a booking number for next door. So explain you didn't actually stay here, but next door? Nope. He argues he stays with us. I try to explain that none of the detail details he gave me are matching up with my system. He incepts, insists he slept at my hotel in room number 207. So I grab his contact number, explain I can look into this, and end the call. I phone next door, and surprise, surprise, everything matches up. So I call him back and say, without a doubt, you stay next door. Nope, he says our system must have a glitch as I stayed in your hotel. Now, the system we used isn't perfect. But you're telling me you stayed in my hotel, then the system lost all details of your booking in my hotel. The system is set up so even canceled and no-show bookings are traceable. Fabricated a new booking for you at the hotel next door to us, which in some magical way they received payment for and had some someone physically check into that room, as well as fabricating three other bookings who all stayed in room 207 at my hotel when you supposedly were staying in that room. By that point, I had had enough with him. I'm normally a pretty patient guy. This bloke wasn't taking a word I was saying in, so I ended the call by telling him the truth. We didn't have his lost property. I wish I could give you all some karma by telling you the next door did have his lost property. If he had just listened to me, I could have reunited him with his belongings, but sadly, they didn't have his items either. Well, I hope it was just like some small things, not like uh, a phone, a wall, or something like that. Ooh, and in the comments section, you got uh, two for two. Markin11 uh, says, Right this morning, I had this Polish woman with her child and her nephew come to the hotel into my hostel to check in. So I take them to their room, and what she saw was a shared six bedroom. She went crazy, saying how this isn't what she bought. She bought a double bedroom for 20 bucks. Yeah, surely. I had to sit there for 20 minutes trying to explain to her that when she made a reservation on our site and she clicked on the double room and told her that it was not available, and it gave her the option of buying a single bed in a shared bedroom. She insisted for a good while until she finally caved. At one point, she said she'd leave, and I kept advising against it, because she already paid a good amount for three nights, and she couldn't get her money back. Tomorrow, the tale continues. Hopefully, she let it go. But, yeah, I know this is a short episode, um, my wonderful Raven Nuts, but I'm going to end it here, because I have a little bit of a headache, I think, from reading so fast, and not taking enough breaths. Uh, but, yeah, so I'll see you next episode, my Raven Nuts, and bye bye